question is were you guys able to watch the uh uh the video that i posted about this the section or do you want me to start from scratch okay john any any preference okay so i'll just start going a little bit about um the basics of how to graph sine and, and cosine. All right, so before I start, right, unit circle, uh, we're less concerned when we graph uh, sine and cosine functions, we're less concerned about these points in the middle over here, all right? Our, basically, our, our basics are gonna be the extremes. Here, x is the biggest, here, y is the biggest, here x is the smallest, and here y is the smallest. So remember that the cos or the, the sine function is equal to the y coordinate in this point, and the cosine of an angle is equal to the x coordinate of this point, divided by the radius, right? But in this case, the unit circle, the radius is one, all right? So, oh, sorry, not x, yeah, let's be more specific, theta, all right? So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna, change, we're gonna be changing these relationships and plotting them over time on an x, y axis, okay? So basically, for sine, we're gonna take all the y coordinates, one, two, three, four, five, boom, 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 and we're gonna start plotting these as, as the angle is the input and that is the output. So this would be zero, zero, pi over six, one half, pi over four, radical two over two, pi over three, and then pi over two, one. All right, again, and the most important, the most important uh, point for sine, if we look at the, right, if we look at the basic function, right, this is an important point. The input is zero, the output is zero. This is an important point. The input is pi over two, the output is one. This is an important point. The input is pi, the output is zero. This is an important point, three pi over two, and the output is negative one, right, the y coordinate. And if we go all the way around the circle, we get back to zero, okay? So this is, the parent function, okay? If you remember, ways we graph functions, right? How do you graph this thing, right? You start with zero, zero, and then I plug in one, and I get one. I plug in two, I get four. I plug in three, I get nine, and I so on and so on and so on. And then I can take these points and use them for transformations of the parent function. Remember, we moved the vertex left, right, up and down. We stretched it, we compressed it. Um, so we did all these things to this function, but you're always starting back with the parent function, right? These are the five key points of the parent function. And when we, when we were go when I was going through this section in the video, right, right, we did all the, we did all the uh, coordinates of all this. And when you, when you actually do that, you get the uh, the nice pretty graph right here. So that's the starting point. Pi over two, one, pi zero, three pi over two, negative one, and two pi zero. Those are the five key points. The rest of them we're gonna estimate. Just like if I'm graphing this, if I'm graphing y is equal to x squared, right, I got zero, zero. I don't plug in one half and say that one half squared is a quarter, right? That would be a silly point to plug in because it's, because it's difficult. Like, why would you do that to yourself? All right. Instead, right now you plug in one and you get one, right? So we're going to focus on the points that are the easiest to graph because, right, what's the, if you remember what the sign of pi over three is, it's radical three over two. Well, not there. This one, radical three over two. Why would you want to graph that? That doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Why, why put 0.86 on a graph somewhere? Might as well just put the one, right? The easier point to graph, okay? And so 
that's why we're sort of only going to graph these five points and then just estimate the curve in between them. Just like when we graph X squared, right? We, 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 don't, we don't have every single point on here. We just, we just draw the curve. We just connect the dots with a nice smooth curve. And as long as I know what the picture looks like, I should be okay. All right. So that's the basic. That is the parent function. Okay. So just like X squared, we did things to the parent function. Right? I stretched or compressed it. Well, we can even put a number in here. I stretched or compressed it vertically. I stretched or compressed it horizontally. I shifted it left or right. I shifted it up or down. Okay? So with all these functions, uh, with all these functions, we are going to use these same transformations. Okay? So... Uh, basics domain, there's nothing you're not allowed to put in, right? My angle can be anything I want. The range, if you look at this picture, if you look at this picture, right, it's always going to go to the top and the bottom. And that should make sense because if you look at the unit circle, again, if we look at the Y coordinate, that's the biggest Y coordinate. That's the highest this circle gets. That's the lowest Y coordinate. That's the lowest this circle gets, right? Unless we stretch it out, uh, which we can do. But typically the parent function, this is the parent function. The parent function only goes between these two points. And same with the cosine, which is the X coordinate. Uh, it only goes between one and negative one as well. All right, so that's what we're talking about when we talk about domain of the sine and cosine function, okay? Oh, and it does repeat, right? It just keeps going. So from here to here is one complete cycle, one period of the function, and we just repeat, 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 repeat. Typically, when I make a question, and when most math teachers make a question, they're gonna want you to graph two full periods of the function. So that would be from here to here, okay? So this would be one period, then all the way to four pi would be two period. And you just repeat the points, right? You just repeat the pattern. And we'll, we'll, we'll go through some of the actual problems in a minute, okay? Uh, remember my shifts. So vertical, it's gonna be outside of the function. Horizontal, it's gonna be inside of the function. If there's a negative in the front, that reflects in the X. We're not really gonna do reflections in the Y because that's really confusing. Uh, but we are gonna do vertical stretch and compression and horizontal stretch and compression, except when we do the sine and cosine function, you can see that's a vertical stretch. It's going to stretch the function up or compress it uh, up and down. That's a horizontal stretch or compression because it's inside the parentheses. That shifts the function left and right, and D shifts the function up and down. But trig functions like to be weird, okay? So they're just called different things. That's A, is called the amplitude, B affects the period, C affects something called the phase shift, and D is the only one that's sort of normal because that is called the vertical shift. All right, so uh, let's run through some uh, things that you need in order to be able to graph this. So you're going to need... You're going to need all these different letters, A, B, C, and D, if the function actually has it. And we're going to have to learn how to um, how to graph them. All right, so if you look at this graph, if that's my starting point and that's my ending point, back to the unit circle again, it's sort of divided up into quarters, right? One quarter, two quarter, three quarter and the fourth quadrant, quarter, whatever. So if you started here, we got one. If we start here as the first point, one, two, three, four, five. So that's where my five key points, this one just happens twice at the beginning and at the end. Um, so you can see that each of these are the same distance apart from each other. So when we graph the sine or the cosine function, right, each of these points each of these key points that happen at those quadrantal angles are gonna be the same distance from each other. So when we talk about graphing these, 
we graph the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, and the fourth quarter, okay? Which gives us, if you count the first one, five key points that are all, this is the whole period. So all of these are one quarter of the period. So that means that all of my key points are a quarter of the period away from each other, all right? So we're gonna figure out where the function starts. Then we're gonna add quarter periods in order to get where these five, these five key points of the sine function happen, right? So, you know, normally if it's like the parent function, uh, they're just gonna happen here, but obviously we're gonna change this function around, okay? So when we do that, we gotta figure out where does the function start and then we're just going to add quarter periods to get the next spot, the next key point. And I need five key points, and then they just keep repeating. Okay. So uh, the y value for the first point and the last point will always be the same, because when then this 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 thing starts to repeat each other. Okay. Um, so let's go through the four different transformations, right? So we always want to identify the amplitude and the period. We're going to graph, we're going to find the X values for the five key points. Then we're going to find the Y values for the five key points, and then we're going to graph it, right? So this is, this is very generic. Uh, the way that I like to graph every function is I figure out where it starts, add the quarter period, follow the pattern of the parent function, for sine and then uh, make the points and graph them. So if you look at the parent function for sine back here again, this is the pattern. Sine starts at a middle, right? This is the middle. The x axis is the middle of the function. Then it goes to its max, then back to the middle then down to the minimum, and then back up to the middle, okay? So that's sort of the, the pattern for a sine function. And if I can't remember it, right, I just like to jot myself a little circle. Okay, I think, all right, I want the Y coordinate for sine. Well, look, that's a Y coordinate, right? If I look at this as a point, the Y coordinate is in the middle, now it's max, now it's min, now it's, uh, or sorry, middle, max, middle, min, back to middle, right? And we're always going to go this way, right? We're always going to go in a positive direction. So if I can just sketch the picture, I just have to remember that the sine function represents the Y coordinate on this unit circle, okay? And back to this. Sorry if I'm jumping around a lot, but I'm trying to put all this together without going very piece by piece like I did in the video. Um, if you know where the function starts, add quarter periods to find the next values of x, and then you use that pattern for sine that we would go the midpoint, the max, then back to the middle, then to the minimum, and then back to the midpoint to get my y values. Okay, so uh, I worked all these out in the video. This is a very simple one. Would you want it? You want us? You guys want to start simple, or you guys want to go right to something a little bit more complicated? Okay, so let's start with the simple one here that's the only transformation, right? Here's the full function. A sine BX minus C plus D. Okay, so it's possible like in questions like this that maybe we'll jump to a little bit in a few minutes, but questions like this have all four. One, two, three, four. They have A, B, C, and D. So in this first thing, in this one half function, okay, the nice simple one, there's only this number. There's only one half. So there's only A. 
right? So I don't have to worry about B. I don't have to worry about C. I don't have to worry about D, okay? So A represents amplitude. So the amplitude of this function is the distance from the middle of the function to the top, the middle of the function for the bottom, and it's always just the absolute value of A. So in this function, A is one half. The amplitude is one half. Okay, technically A is one half and then the amplitude is one half as well. Now, A is negative one half, but the amplitude is positive one half. The value, the amplitude is always the absolute value of A. If there's a negative in the front, it's just a reflection. The formula for period that you have to remember is 2 pi divided by B. But there is no B. B is the number in front of X. There's still a number in front of X. It's 1. So my period is 2 pi divided by 1, which is 2 pi. Okay, then once I find the period, the next thing I need to do is find the quarter period. The way you find a quarter of a period is you take the period and you divide it by four. You take a quarter of it. So we take two pi over four, which is pi over two. So that tells me something. That tells me that my function starts somewhere and every single key point is going to be pi over two away from the previous one, okay? Now, every function always starts at the same place unless you move it, okay? It always starts at zero, right? That's where the unit circle starts, right? It all comes back to the unit circle. We're always gonna start right there, right? That's standard position. We move it, with a number there inside of the parentheses, inside of parentheses with sign. There is no number inside of parentheses with sign. So this function will start at zero. Um, I don't need this. Let me get through. Let me get rid of this. Okay. So this function is going to start at zero. So my five key points, let me get rid of this one too. All right. So my five key points. So next I need key points. Right, and we could always say that C is zero and D is zero because they're not there. All right, so my five key points are zero, and we'll finish it in a second. These we'll start with the x's. The next x function starts at zero. These are angles, right? The input into a sine or a cosine function is an angle. Okay, all right. So my next key point is pi over two later. So if my first one's zero, I add pi over two. If I add another pi over 2, I get pi. If I add another pi over 2, I get 3 pi over 2. And if I add another pi over 2, I get 2 pi. I need five of them. I got five. Okay? Now, we need the outputs. Remember the pattern. The pattern was the middle, the max, the middle, the min, and then back to the middle again. Okay? So the middle of a sine function is always zero unless you move it. And we haven't moved it because D would be the thing that then moves it, vertical shift. So my middle is going to be zero. The max is always going to be, the formula is uh, D plus A, and the minimum is D minus a well d is zero right there is no vertical shift so the max is just going to be one half and the minimum is going to be negative one half and then my middle is zero and the middle the formula for the middle is always just d the vertical shift and in case uh, in case we have one for now we don't Okay, but I don't want to. I don't want to forget about these two things because they are important. They do do stuff. Okay, so now that you have your points here, now you just graph them. Okay, and when you graph them, the x-axis is going to have angles. The y-axis is going to have numbers. So if we call this one, two, three, negative one, negative two, negative three, 
we get zero, zero. Pi over two, a half. Pi, zero. Three pi over two, negative a half. And there we go. And so my graph is a very skinny graph with this scale. looks like that. Um, if I wanted to graph the parent function, the parent function would look like this. Okay. So you can see that this one half vertically compressed the function. If I wanted to graph this, right, the only thing that's changed is the amplitude. So the only thing that changed with the key points, right, the, the, the period is still 2 pi. The key points are still the same, right? The only difference is now the max Instead of going plug pi over 2 into sine x, you get 1, and you just multiply by 3. So you can plug this in as well, but the max is always the amplitude or the, uh, the midline plus the amplitude. So you can see that this function, right, now has been stretched by a factor of 3 and now is much taller. Yeah. Try to be a little smoother than that, right? It should be a little bit more rounded. Definitely, please don't go like this. It's not an angular function, right? It should be some sort of curve. So, you know, try your best with, with graphing these. And you will have to graph them by hand a little bit. All right. Let's throw in some of these other things. Let's throw in some of these other letters into this. In fact, let's throw in a let's throw in a B and a C. Uh, and so again, here's your formulas that you need to know. The other one is phase shift is equal to C over B, and vertical shift is equal to D. Okay. So all these different letters inside the function, remember where they are. So A sine BX minus C plus D. So remember just where these are in the function. Um, so that way you know which, which number I'm talking about. All right. So uh, let's throw in one with, uh, let's do this one. Yeah, this is a good one. Okay. So. So instead of breaking this down like that, here's here's the here's the way I sort of want you to approach every one of these problems is start with this A B C D. Okay? So A is 4. B is 2, the number in front of x. Now here's where you have to be careful. C, you have to be very careful, all right? You should remember that if there is a negative here in the function, inside of the function, that shifts the function to the right. If it's a positive, that shifts the function to the left. So C is going to give us the phase shift. So that means if it's whatever sign is in here, you're going to kind of want to change it to make it go left or right, right? Because if our formula has a negative in it, right, then C is positive. If this was a positive, it would be minus a minus, so then C would be negative. So you're going to have to sort of change the sign of C. So C is going to be 2 pi over 3. And you can sort of remember this because I want the function to go right. I want C to be positive. If C is not positive, the function is going to go, if C is negative, the function is going to go or sorry, I want, yeah, I want the function to go right. If C is negative, that's going to shift my starting point to the left, okay? But I want to shift my starting point to the right because of the negative in this function. And D is zero, okay? So that makes the amplitude just four. Right? I want to differentiate that a little bit because if it's a negative in here, then that's going to be a reflection. B helps me give the period. The formula for period is 2 pi over B. So that's going to be 2 pi over 2, which is just pi. Then you also need from period the quarter period. So the quarter period is going to be pi over 4. Okay, C. 
gives me the phase shift. The phase shift is going to be C over B. So my phase shift is going to be 2 pi over 3 divided by 2. Okay, well, 2 pi over 3 divided by 2 over 1, uh, that means multiply by a half, which gives me 2 pi over 6, which is pi over 3. Okay, so that's the phase shift. Okay, the vertical shift is zero, which then lets me get the middle, the middle, the max, and the min. So the middle is just D. The max is D plus A, absolute value of A if it's negative, and then D minus A. So the middle is zero, the max is four, and the min is negative four, okay? That is all the information that you need to successfully graph this function. The last thing you need to do is you need to take all this and get the five key points, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is find my key points, okay? And I have one, two, three, four, five of them, okay? Sine and cosine functions always start at the phase shift. That's the phase shift. That's where it starts, okay? The next one will be the starting point plus a quarter of the period. So unfortunately there, we need a, a common denominator a third plus a fourth is 7 pi over 12. To get the next one, you take your current point and you add a quarter of the period. So plus pi over 4 again gives me 5 pi over 6. And you can just do that on a calculator. All right. So again, we have 5 pi over 6 plus a quarter of the period. And we get... 13 pi over 12, and then again, we get 4 pi over 3. And now the distance from the start to the end should be one period, and the period was pi. So from pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3 is pi, okay? Then if you remember the pattern for sine, which is the y coordinates, I want the middle point. I want the max, I want the min, then I want the max middle, sorry, then the min, and then back to the middle, right? You see, I'm going along the circle this way. Y coordinates. So here's the middle, middle, top, middle, bottom, back to the middle, okay? And I already calculated those. I calculated those right here. So my middle was zero, my max is four, back to the middle, down to the min, and now back to the middle. There are my five key points to graph this function. And typically, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you a blank graph, and that is way easier, okay? So if I wanted to graph this, on a blank graph, and let's do two. Let's do two um, periods of the function. Okay, my first key point is pi over three. Then the same distance for all of them. I'm just going to label my my x-axis. Now, unfortunately, if I want to graph two periods. I got to keep adding pi over 4 to get the next key points, which is going to be 19 pi over 12. Sorry, these don't work uh, nicely. 11 pi over 6, 25 pi over 12. And all I'm doing is adding pi over 4. And then 7 pi over 3. The distance from the start to this one should be two periods. One period, two periods. Yeah, okay, works because the period is pi. Okay, so let's go one, two, three, four. 
negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Okay, now I just plot the points. So 0, 4, 0, negative 4, back to 0. Then the pattern repeats up, middle, down, back to the middle. And I just graph it with a nice, smooth curve like that. And that's two periods of this function. Okay. Let's jump to a cosine. Actually, let's do a sine with everything. And then we'll do a cosine. Uh, let's find a good sign with everything. That's a cosine. Here's a good sign. It's got it's got everything in. Okay. So, what do you need? You need A. You need B. You need C. You need D. A is one half, which gives you the amplitude, which is also one half. B is three. To get the period, you need the formula 2 pi over b. So that is 2 pi over 3. From the period, you get the quarter period, which would be 2 pi over 3 divided by 4, which would be pi over 6. Right, divide by 4, multiply by a quarter, so that's uh, 2 over 12, pi over 6. C is going to be a positive pi over 4 because I want to shift the function to the right. Okay? The phase shift is going to be pi over 4 divided by 3. Uh, the formula is C over B. Okay? Pi over 4 uh, divided by 3 is going to be pi over 12. Uh, at least these things match up a little bit more than the last one. D is negative 2. That means the vertical shift is down too. So that means that the middle is negative two. The max is negative two plus a half. That's negative one and a half. And the min is negative two minus a half, negative two and a half. Okay. The key points. R, start at the phase shift, okay? And then let's make one, two, three. You need five, four, five. Okay, there's my five key points. Start at the phase shift. So my phase shift is pi over 12, and I'm going to add to it a quarter of the period, pi over 6. So that is pi over 4. Okay. Add another quarter of the period, and we get 5 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, and 3 pi over 4. The pattern for the sine function, again, draw yourself a little circle if you need help remembering, middle, max, middle, min, middle because I'm talking about the y coordinate of those points so my middle was negative 2 and that goes for all three of these my max was negative 1.5 and my minimum was negative 2.5 there's my function or there's my key points to graph this function let's make this nice and big now let's even make it bigger so that's one two, three, let's go negative one, negative two, negative three, right? Because they're all going to be pretty much down here, right? Because we did a vertical shift. All right, so now I need my key points. All right, pi over 12, uh, that's pretty small, so let's keep it right in there, pi over 12. Then the next one would be uh, pi over 4, then the next one is 5 pi over 12. And then 7, 3 pi over 4. Next one, we keep adding a quarter period to get two complete periods. 
11 pi over 12. They, these should all be the same. So don't space them out, you know, too, too much. Uh, 13 pi over 12. 5 pi over 4. 17 pi over 12. Is that enough? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I need one more. And 19 pi over 12. Okay, so now from here, now I start plotting the points, negative two. So, come on, come on. <laughs> come on, buddy. You can do it. All right, so negative two for the first one. Then negative one and a half, then negative two, then negative two and a half, then back to negative two, and then the pattern just repeats itself as we make my dots. And I did one too many. So we're going to start here, and we're just going to connect the dots. And you should finish the same place that you're starting. Okay, so this is one period, one complete cycle, and then this was the other period. So I didn't need, I didn't need that guy. All right. So that's sine. Okay. Let's do a cosine. Okay. Everything is exactly the same for cosine, except let's go all the way back to the beginning. Except now we're talking about the x coordinate of the function. So my five key points would be 0, 1. Next one, pi over 2, 0. Next one, x coordinates, uh, pi negative 1. 3 pi over 2, 0, and back to 2 pi and 1. So notice that now the pattern is the maximum, the middle, the min, the middle, and the max. Okay. I Again, I like to think of it as a, on the circle. And now since we're talking about the x-coordinate of the unit circle, Right. This is the, it starts at the biggest it gets. Then the x coordinate gets smaller, smaller. Then it starts to get bigger and bigger again. Uh, I had in the video this picture, which is a nice sort of representation of how the two different coordinates, the x and the y coordinates, are plotting into a into a curve and this is the one that's harder to visualize because x is the max now x is the min now x is the max now back to the min and what you're doing is you're spinning that around right you're rotating it a little bit to plot it in a angle slash output right what's the output of that angle the function is pulling Right, the, the definition of a cosine function is it's pulling the x coordinate at a specific angle. Okay, so that's the trick to remembering the cosine function, and as long as you remember that, everything else is the same. Okay, so that means that all these steps that we did for all these, all these steps that we did for the cosine function or for the sine function, uh, let's get to this problem. Which one do we do? This one. If this was a cosine, everything here would be exactly the same except for this pattern. If this was a cosine, it would be pi over 12, pi over 4, 5 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, and 3 pi over 4. All those would be the, exactly the same, but the pattern here would go max, middle, min, max, 
or middle, and then back to the maximum again. So, so this would be max, mid, min, middle, max, as opposed to middle, max, middle, min, middle. Okay. So, and again, you could, you could try to remember this pattern, but I, f I feel like just drawing a little circle like that for you and think, okay, Y coordinate. That's the middle, top, middle, bottom, middle. X coordinate, X, left and right. So this is the max, the middle, the min, the middle, the max. So if you just if you just think about how you travel around the circle, right, this pattern is going to be the same. And all these other steps, everything that you do up here with A, B, C, and D, period, quarter, period, phase shift, uh, vertical shift, finding the mins and the maxes, all of that is the same, okay? The only difference is the pattern. Now, there's a lot of differences in the next section when we start to graph tangents, uh, but let's not get too ahead of ourselves here. Um, okay, so let's do a full cosine, okay? So again, all the stuff, all the stuff that I do, let's change it, we just did a half. Let's change this, let's make it a three, okay? All the stuff that I just did is going to be exactly the same. So we want A, B, C, D. And actually, let's change this to, to do something different, okay? So A would be three. That makes the amplitude equal to three. B would be four. This is the variable, right? It's not four theta. It's just the variable. That makes the period four, sorry, two pi divided by B, which is four. So that is pi over two. A quarter of the period would be pi over eight. Yeah. Okay. C would be a negative three pi over four because I want to shift the function to the left. So again, you're just going to change the sign here to get whether C is positive or negative. Okay. That's why some textbooks like to put a plus in here and say the formula for phase shift is negative C over B, but then their parent function is a sine of bx plus c uh, plus d. So whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, what you need to remember is, do you want the function to go left or right? It's a positive. I want it to go left. The phase shift is negative. Okay. So the phase shift is c over b. So that gives me negative 3 pi over 4 divided by 4. So that's going to be 3 pi over 16. Yeah. Negative. So not the nicest numbers in this particular problem, but whatever. We can do it. Uh, I got a calculator. So D is negative 2, which makes the vertical shift negative 2. They're always going to be the same. So now the middle is always the vertical shift. The maximum is the vertical shift plus the amplitude, which gives me negative 2 plus 3 is going to be 1. The minimum is negative 2 minus 3 to give me negative 5. Okay. Now, let's move this. Let's get a little more room. Move this down. And let's get our five key points. So five key points. One, two, three, four, five. The function starts at the phase shift. Always. Okay. Then we take three negative three pi over 16 and I add a quarter of the period so that is 
well, 2 pi over 16, so it's going to be negative pi over 16. Okay. Then the next one would be a positive pi over 16. Then, well, this actually worked out easier than I thought it was going to. Okay. So now the pattern for cosine is going to start at the max. So it's going to start at 1, then it's going to go to the middle, then it's going to go to the minimum, then it's going to go back to the middle, and then finally back to the maximum. Okay? So you're going to graph this. Well, look, these two are negative, so that means they have to be on the left of the, the x-axis here. So we're going to go kind of like this. Well, actually, let's... Everything has to be the same distance apart from each other. And so we're going to kind of go like that. All right, so this is going to be negative 3 pi over 16. Negative pi, positive, positive, then a 5. And then let's do two periods. So that's 7, uh, 9. 11, and 13. I might have done one too many. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, perfect. Okay. Uh, so now what do I have to do for Y? Uh, I have to go between 1 and 5. So let's make this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, so we start with 1. No, sorry. We start with negative. Yeah, we start with 1, then negative 2. Then negative 2. So that's here. Then, oops. We start with positive 1. That looks better. Then negative 2. Then negative 5. Then back to negative 2, then back to positive 1, and then we do it again. So negative 2, negative 5, negative 2, and positive 1. And let me graph this in red so we can actually see it. And we get something that looks like a nice, smooth ish. Ooh, I missed that one. A nice curve, kind of like that. And you can see that the middle of this function is not the x-axis anymore. It's negative 2, the midline, the place where the function is at the middle. Okay. So how are we doing? All right. Does anybody have any more specific questions that uh, you want me to go over? Um, you know, this is this is pretty much what I did on the recording, except I went a little bit slower, right? So I did each transformation a little bit a little bit separately. But I think it's really good to understand at the end how each one of them affects the function and how uh, I can graph these by putting all the pieces together, right? If we start out with just the amplitude, you, you would say, oh, it just starts at zero, but that's not always true, right? The function always starts at the phase shift. The phase shift can just happen to be zero in some functions. So that's why I think it's good now to look sort of at the end of this with all four transformations and know what they all do, know what piece they give you Right, the amplitude. You need the ampl You need a to get the amplitude uh, to figure out the min, max, and the middle in conjunction with d. Uh, b and b provides the period, and you need that the quarter period to know what to add to, to get to the next thing. C gives you the phase shift, and it tells you where your starting point is. So here's your starting point. Here's your next points, and here is how you get the y coordinates with those numbers put together. So 
it takes some practice. All right. So if you're, if you're not good at it at first, or if you're a little confused, try to watch this again. Um, I know we, we've gone on for like an hour now, so it's a lot. And the other, the other video is like an hour and a half. Uh, you know, try to try to watch these a little bit. I think the math Excel is okay because uh, it's a lot of just clicking and filling in the uh, the graphing tool. Next week, uh, I'm gonna put up questions that you're gonna work out yourself, kind of like this, and I'll and I'll give you a video just exactly like this about how I want you to set up each problem. I want you to find A, B, C, and D. I want you to find the amplitude, the period, the quarter period, the phase shift. The vertical shift, the middle, the max, the 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 minimum, five key points, and then graph two periods of the function. Okay, so we'll have a couple of those, uh, a couple of problems just like this for homework uh, next week, and then we'll get into the other functions. This was only two of them. There's four more. Sorry, yeah, there's four more, right? Because we still have to do tangent, and then we're going to do all the reciprocal functions, which are uh, secant, cosecant, and cotangent. But basically, for, for secant and cosecant, you just graph the sine and the cosine, and then you sort of flip it over because uh, they're reciprocal functions. So we really only need to ha learn how to do sort of uh, one more. Um, unless one of you has another question, uh, I'm, I'm going to call it here. Anybody have anything else they want to talk about? All right. So I uh, do the math Excel. Take your time. It's not due till Monday. Uh, I'm going to post the other, the next assignment to do with graphing on Monday. So, you know, plenty of time, no rush. Uh, podcast today at 2.30. If you guys want to pop in and uh, chat about anything, you know, school related, I don't think we have too, too much news. I think you've all heard the, the basics that we're not coming back to at least the 15th. Um, so, you know, uh, we'll talk about all that sort of stuff and, uh, all, all of like school related stuff. Uh, but hope this helped and I'll talk to you guys later. Whoops. I have to.